happening everyone welcome back to the workshop i hope you're all keeping well now i'm planning on taking a sojourn into the world of kumiko that amazing japanese woodworking art form if you've not seen it before i'll roll in some pictures of it now but it can be unbelievably complicated and complex or very very simple and it looks unbelievably elegant um, especially when you add it to lamps and boxes there's loads you can actually do with it so i want to jump in and try some of that out and in order to do that i'm going to have to make some jigs so that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to make the pairing jig for setting the angles on the Kumiko strips so that you can join them all together. So we need a 45 degree one, a 22.5 and a 67.5 degree one as well. So I'm going to take this block and we're going to make all three of the pairing jigs with um, adjustable stops in it. So that's what this video is going to be about. So let's jump in and do it. Okay, let's get cracking on making these jigs. Now this is what I'm going to be using. It's a leg off an old coffee table. It's just going to be recycled and it's actually made from oak and it's just laminate strips, but it's over four inches in thickness. So I'm going to split this down the middle, which will give me two pieces that are two inches thick and I can cut them as well. So I should be able to get all three of my jigs out of this. And I'm going to make three separate jigs. You could make them all in one with the angles on the different corners. I'll explain that as we go along. I want to make three separate ones because I think it's going to be easier to use them that way. So most important, we need to be accurate when making these things. So if you're going to take a piece, you want to laminate something together, whatever it is, make sure that you get it all nice and square. And I just happen to have two very square faces here. So that's perfectly flat all the way down and it's exactly at 90 degrees to this face here. So that is good. I'm good to go there. So I don't take this to my planer and uh, square everything up. It is already square. So let's take this to the band saw. Let's split it in half. Let's chop off this end on the miter saw and we can start making up these jigs. Okay, my first job is to rip this in half. So let's do that. Okay, another in halves, I'm going to take the rough face off the bandsaw, I'm going to flatten that out, I'm going to put that against my fence and get a perfect 90 degree edge to that face on both pieces. So let's crack on and do that. Now I want to be as accurate as possible setting that 90 degree edge. So I'm just going to check my fence one more time to make sure that it's 100% and it is. So we're good to go. Okay, now that I have a face side, face edge, perfectly 90 degrees. Now they're good and flat and exactly 90 degrees. I'm going to route my channel in my face edge now. So my face can go against my fence. I'm going to put a 20 mil channel 10 millimeters deep in this. I'm going to make it nice and wide and nice and deep because you can do small Kumiko pieces in a wide channel. But obviously you can't do large Kumiko pieces in a narrow channel. So we're going to have plenty of scope on this. So I'm going to use my 20 millimeter bit. So that's roughly three quarters of an inch by almost half an inch deep for you guys using Imperial. So it's going to set up my router table now with a 20 mil or three quarter inch bit in it. Just like that. So I get everything centered up over this and we run a channel straight down the center of both our pieces. Thank you. 
Okay, there's our 10 by 20 millimeter channel cut in both pieces. Now, like I said, the wider channel allows you to use smaller Kumiko pieces. So the both, either side of your channel is essentially your fence. So even though I'm using narrow pieces, just like this Kumiko strips, I can hold them against that fence in there, no problem, and pair off the ends. Now, I'm actually gonna get four out of this. So I'm gonna cut these in half. Don't have to worry about that. I can actually use the top of this, so it'll be fine. So I'll chop these in half, and then we're gonna put the angles, the all important angle pieces on this. So let's get to the uh, miter saw. Okay, so let's chop these in half. Now I have two reference faces, and I always wanna make sure that I'm referencing from those. So it's my reference face, that's my reference edge, and so my face is gonna go against the base of my miter saw, and my edge is gonna go against the fence. And I'm gonna keep it that way even when I'm cutting the ankles, because we just wanna be as accurate as we can possibly be. The more accurate we are here, the better our Kumiko patterns are going to come out. So let's cut these in half. Okay, so now that they're in half, it's time to turn these into the actual jigs themselves. So this is gonna be the 45 degree jig. So I'm gonna put a 45 degree cut on this. Now, I don't have to cut it from from the corner all the way back up. I only take the, this much off. So roughly to about the halfway point here, I'm just gonna lop off that corner exactly at 45 degrees. And again, bearing in mind, this is my reference edge. So that has to go against my fence to try and maintain um, as much accuracy as possible. So roughly about that much there should be good. So let's chop that. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna cut is a 67.5 degrees. So I gotta set my miter saw to 22.5. So remember, whatever angle we set our miter saw to, that's what we're removing off 90 degrees. So if we take 22.5 degrees off 90, that will leave us with 67.5. So let's cut that one. Okay, on to the more tricky one. Now, this is the 22.5 degree one. Now, remember, we have to take 67.5 off 90 to leave us with 22.5. Now, my miter saw will not swing to 60 out to 67.5 degrees. Most miter saws will not. So, the way we get around this is to add 45 degrees to this angle, and that will give us our 20. 2.5 degrees. So if I leave my miter saw set to 22.5, add 45 degrees to it, so we're actually moving the block rather than moving the miter saw itself. So you've got to use your uh, miter square up against your fence, set your block up against that, which is exactly what I've done there. Now my block is exactly 45 degrees to my fence plus 22.5 I'm removing from 90. That will leave me with an angle of 22.5 here. Hopefully that makes sense. This is how you do it if you're doing it on the miter saw. So this is gonna be tricky to hold. I'm obviously gonna to have to pull my square out of the way. I'm not gonna keep this held with my fingers like this. So I'm gonna use some double-sided sticky tape now. I have a line drawn here. So let's get this block stuck to the bit of plywood that I have underneath. So we'll put that there. Just like that. Get this set up to my line, which I've drawn, which is right there. Just check that I'm 100%, everything is happy. That looks good. And now I can cut just a corner off that, and that will give me an angle of 22.5 degrees right there. Okay guys, so that's essentially gonna be our three jigs almost made there. So we just need to check a couple of things. So we have our 67.5, our 45, and our 22.5. And all I want us to make sure now is that this face here is perfectly square to the sides here. 
So just gonna make sure that our miter saw did a good job. And that is good and square all the way along down there. So that's happy days. And likewise, that's good and square down there. And check that one as well, because if these are off at all, we're going to start to get discrepancies and discrepancies will compound throughout your whole Kumiko uh, frame or your design or your pattern. So we're going to try and be as accurate as we possibly can be here. So that's good and square there. Now, let's check our angles to make sure that we are pretty close. Okay, first up is our 45. Let's just check this with the level box, zero that. Now, this is not going to be 100% accurate, but it'll just give a good visual reference for the camera. My shaky hands. So let's get that down. There you go, 45 degrees, pretty much bang on. So our happy days in that regards. Now our 22.5. So let's just get this to zero. We'll check our angle. If I stop shaking and hold it steady, there we go. 22.5 exactly so our miter saw is doing a pretty good job there on to the next one okay last but not least is our 67.5 let's see how we did here just try and get that to zero there we go yep 67.5 that's pretty much bang on where we need to be so happy days all our angles are good and all our faces and edges are square so that's exactly what we want Okay, next thing I want to do is just fit a little threaded insert into our groove right here. So just mark the center of all these. I'm going to fit three threaded inserts and they'll take a six mil or a quarter inch nut and that'll hold our fence in place. I'm going to make our fence now in a second. So let's just get our inserts in. It's only a case of drill two slightly different size holes and just tap them down. We should be good to go. Okay, now our holes are drilled, it's just a case of tapping our inserts. And this is very straightforward. Just wanna knock them in there. Use an old drill bit I find works great for this. Just tap them down. Don't use a new one, obviously, because you will destroy it. Okay guys, so now it's time to make our fence. Now I've just added another insert to the back of the jig. For the reason for that being, is when I put in my fence, I want to be able to slide it all the way back just so I can use longer lengths of Kumiko. And if I just used the middle one, my uh, fence would stop about there and that's the length of the piece I could use. So with an extra one in the back, it means I can pull this fence back to here if I'm doing longer pieces. So it's just a little option. It's nice to have there, whether it's used or not, whether I use pieces that long or not, it's just nice to have the option. So I have a piece of 20 mil wide um, oak here, just happened to have an offcut and it runs in this slot nicely. The thickness is about just exactly 10 mil, so 10 by 20, which is almost exactly the same as our slot. So that's nice. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna route in the dead center of this an eight millimeter slot. I'm using a six mil or quarter inch bolt, but I'm gonna make the slot just that little bit wider, just in case any of these guys are slightly off center. I won't be trying to fiddle and get the screw in into it. It'll just give me a little bit of leeway. And this will be enough to grab this fence and hold our piece. We don't need too much strength. So back to the router table. Let's route a slot in this. Now I'm gonna do this, um, in this long piece as it is. I'm not gonna cut this into small sections and try and route a slot in it, that would be dangerous. So we'll use the full length of the piece. We'll route a little piece here, another little piece here, another little piece here, and then we'll cut them into the size of our fence. So let's do that. Okay guys, I'm cutting the slot out of my little uh, fence pieces, or my adjustable stops I should say. So I'm gonna cut them all out of one big long piece so my hands are going nowhere near it. So I've just marked them out. I've marked out my center line, where I want it to begin, where I want it to end. I've drilled an eight mil hole, which will fit right over my router bit. And it's just a case of pop them along and route them down. Now, everything is really firmly held in place between the fence and the feather board. So I wouldn't advise doing this if nothing is held in place and your hands aren't well away from it. So again, uh, everything is nicely held down so it's good to go, as you'll see now in a second. Let's get the next one routed. Thank you. 
just like that, absolutely no issues. And you can always ream that little hole just to give yourself a little bit of extra room so that the bit doesn't bite too hard. And again, once it's held tightly with the feather board and against that fence, it's not going to go anywhere. So just make sure that is the case. Okay guys, there we go. Our fences are working nicely. Our, our adjustable stops, I keep calling them fences. This is actually the fence here. So you can see, you can set your length that you wanna do, cut your piece and then cut the angle on it. And you can adjust this. And if we need to do a longer piece, we can just take the screw from there over to here and that will let us pull this back further. So let's go drop the other two screws into these ones. They are just ready to go and we are happy days. I'll give you just a quick little demonstration of these things in action. And in upcoming videos, we're gonna be doing lots of different styles of Kumiko, and we have a few more jigs that need to be made as well. Okay guys, that's our three jigs for our different angles that we need to get going in Kumiko made now. So they are working absolutely perfectly. Very happy with them. All our angles and everything are correct, so it's good to go. So I just have my Moxon voice set up here now. So if I just drop my 45 degree jig into the Moxon voice, just like that, clamp that in place, I can work here. And the nice thing is, is the fence is still movable inside in the voice because it's the block that's caught. So we'll just take a little piece, say a little piece of Kumiko strip like that, and I'll show you guys exactly how we use this pairing jig. Okay guys, just give you a quick demonstration of one of these jigs in action. Once you see one, you get the idea. So we use a 45 degree jig, it's in the voice, like I said. So a little bit of sapili here. So typical of what you might see in Kumiko. I think basswood and whitewood is some of the best to use. So I have my stop set. I just wanna put a little 45 degree angle in this. So I'm just gonna work that down to the top of the block. And that'll just set a nice little 45 in this. Again, I think the thing with Kumiko is it's all about patience. Take your time. It is a slow endeavor. Not that I'm an expert in it or anything, but just going by the few pieces that I've tried to make, it's definitely something you want to do over a few days. Don't rush it. Batch out your pieces. Nice and simple. And there's a little 45 degree angle in the side of that sapili. Hopefully that's coming out on camera. And it's likewise, I could put the 45 back the other way now. You put 25.5 or the 67.5 in it as well. And that will do a lot of our Kumiko patterns with those angles. Okay guys, so there we go. That's our three Kumiko pairing jigs made with three angles that we need and our adjustable stop. So that will get us going into most of the Kumiko patterns. There is a few more angles and stuff that you will need. There's also a bunch more jigs to be made along the way, but this will get us going. So there's gonna be more Kumiko stuff coming up on the channel. I'm gonna figure out what's the best way to make the Kumiko sticks as well, so to batch these out. And when I come up with a system, I'll be sure and show that with your guys as well. Most of the Kumiko work that I'm gonna be doing is probably gonna be all hand tool woodworking. So I wanna make some lanterns, some boxes. I wanna add some of the detail, uh, the Kumiko detail to it, because it's a really pretty pattern you can get from it. Um, it is time consuming, you do need patience to do it but it's really worth doing at the end of the day so hopefully you've enjoyed that one guys hopefully you got something out of it like i said there's gonna be more of this stuff coming up so uh, yeah hopefully you do like kumiko so i'm gonna get out of here now guys if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you're new here think about subscribing comments and questions below as always take it easy look after yourselves i shall see you in the next one